Dear viewers, welcome to our second session. I'm Dr. Wendy Victor Roy from Kola Chemicals Industries. This session will be uh, entirely on how we can control the ticks. And as uh, we continue our campaign on uh, a chemicide resistance and how to eliminate ticks, which ticks we learned about the last time. Um, <clears throat> today, I come to talk about uh, the types of acaricides that we have. But before I go into the types of the classes of acaricides that we have, that is the most commonly asked question by our farmers. They usually say in Luganda, or <coughs> the medicines on the market are not working. And I usually pose a question to them and say, do these products not work? Or do we have something different? And more often than not, we get to find out that uh, the products actually work, but our farmers are not enlightened enough to understand well how to use them, one, what to use, when, how to use what. And then <coughs> um, we end up with uh, scenarios like uh, under dosage, which so many farmers will think is uh, a caricide resistance. Well, I'm not saying a caricide resistance doesn't exist, no, it does. But uh, <coughs> I think after this session, we shall be able to to tell whether we are having a caricide resistance or we are just uh, misusing these products or don't really know how to use the products. Um, on the market in Uganda, we've got uh, four classes of acaricides. That is uh, uh, the amitrazes or as other people try to call, we'll call them uh, amidines. We've got uh, organophosphates. We've got uh, synthetic pyrethroids. And we've got the macrocyclic lactones. Now, um, the macrocyclic lactones, we, I won't go too much into that because uh, <clears throat> the ones that we have on the market tend to be more of the warmers than uh, uh, they are caricides. So the three major classes of caricides that we're using on the market currently are you know, uh, amitrazes, the most commonly abused. We have uh, <clears throat> the synthetic pyrethroids and the organophosphates. Now, if you tell me that all these three classes do not work at your farm, then to me, I think uh, that is uh, that is not true. Why? Let me give you some of the examples of these products. Uh, I've got uh, two products here. Uh, one is uh, Sanga Tribe and another is Bima Tribe. These products are all amitrizers. So most, more often than not, when our farmers go to um, the shops or the drug, <coughs> or you know, the drug shops, uh, they tend to say, I've been using a certain product, maybe be my driver. Now I want it to change to uh, maybe something different. Then uh, the shop person will give you Sanga tries. Now, do you really think they've changed the product? I don't think. I think you have changed manufacturers, but you have not changed um, <coughs> the product. Then, uh, <coughs> secondly, I would uh, like to talk about a mode of administration of these products. How do we administer them? Yes, you go to the farm, or rather, you go to the shop, ask for product. You're given a product. You're given how to use this product. And when uh, you go back to the farm, you reconstitute it but then how do you apply the product most of them are using knapsack sprayers as we shall demonstrate <coughs> later on in uh, our subsequent sessions you're using a knapsack sprayer but a knapsack, knapsack sprayer cannot produce enough pressure for <coughs> this drug to be able to reach the skin <coughs> and that is where the tick attaches so what are we having you're having very well reconstituted drug but the drug is not reaching, is not reaching the, <coughs> the skin. Um, in, our in our subsequent session, uh, we shall show you, we shall demonstrate to you on uh, the right equipment to use while uh, spraying our animals. Uh, we shall do it on the farm and uh, we shall show you all the areas that uh, need to be addressed. And uh, that way, in my opinion, we shall eliminate uh, the resistance uh, issue 
However, <clears throat> I would also like to um, recommend the following. Um, I talked about three, uh, three or four classes of acaricides. I'd like um, <clears throat> each and every farmer to at least get two acaricides, rotate with acaricides. Either get an amitraz and an organophosphate, or you get uh, amitraz and a uh, synthetic pyrethroid, and rotate them over a period of every six months. Six months, you have an organophosphate. Six months, you can go back to your amitraz with the right uh, spraying technique. And for those that are doing the dipping, Yes, I've also received uh, <coughs> complaints of uh, people that own beef. They say the products don't work, but these beefs need to be calibrated every after at least four months because you are spraying <coughs> all the time. When you spray all the time, um, the acaricide strength definitely goes down. So you need to make sure that uh, the dip is well calibrated. And uh, in my opinion, I, I still say there is not much resistance. We're having more of an underdosage than it is resistance. And uh, <clears throat> I would like to urge all our viewers that at Wukola Chemicals Industries, we are very ready to <clears throat> uh, take on our farmers, show them the right thing to do. I believe uh, if you entrust us with your farms, if you entrust us with your animals, if you trust us to give you the knowledge, then uh, the issue of Acaricide resistance should really not be a big challenge. Um, with that, I would like to end this session. Uh, please follow us and uh, drop any comments on our social media platforms that is Vukola Vet on Instagram, at Vukola Vet on uh, Twitter. You can also find us on, uh, <clears throat> you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, you'll be getting all these sessions. And with that, I'd like to come to the end of this session. I stay Dr. Mwundi Victor Roy, who call the chemicals industries. <laughs>